Okay, uh, I used to think about uh, Einstein's theories on relativity a lot, um, and I mean, you know, a lot, and, and I still do off and on uh, whenever I'm inspired to or whenever I have time to basically become comatose, uh, because I always essentially become a zombie uh, or go into a catatonic vegetable state uh, whenever I go down those uh, theoretical rabbit holes. And uh, just so you know, uh, right up front, uh, there are a lot of problems I uh, personally have with uh, these theories, and, and I don't fully agree with them, um, especially when it comes to uh, the special theory of relativity. Anyway, I was uh, going through my old notes on relativity the other day, because um, you know I always uh, jot this stuff down or write little notes on it, um, things that I agree with and things that I don't agree with. and. Um, uh, and I, I was doing that to, you know, looking through my old notes to kind of re-familiarize myself uh, with the subject. And I was reminded that, uh, according to Einstein's theory um, on relativity, we can consider the whole universe from a photon's point of view. And uh, in doing so, uh, the whole length of the universe is uh, zero and time is completely frozen. Now uh, think about that for just a moment, uh, you know, what that means. Uh, to me, it implies that the universe is not infinite, that it's a finite universe, because how can you shrink or reduce an infinite universe into zero, you know, into zero length? Because, you know, if it's infinite, no matter how much you keep trying to reduce it or implode it or shrink it, it's gonna, there's always going to be more of it, so it would never end. But if you can shrink it to zero, um, then, then it would imply that there's a finite universe. Um, and I'm one of those who actually believes the universe is infinite, an infinitely repeating set. Uh, and a lot of scientists and philosophers uh, share that view, you know, they're kind of split on whether or not it's infinite or not infinite, you know, all throughout history. But I'm definitely one of those who believes that uh, the universe is infinite uh, for, for various reasons that I, I won't go into right now. And uh, many people uh, don't realize that uh, light doesn't always travel at its maximum speed, uh, which is basically uh, 300 million uh, meters per second or 186,000 uh, miles per second, if I remember that correctly. Um, there are times when light travels slower when it passes through certain materials, you know, certain mediums like glass or water. Um, in fact, scientists recently slowed down the velocity of light to only 38 uh, miles per hour. Uh, by passing it through super cold uh, sodium. In fact, I think they got it, you know, so cold it was like almost near zero or something like that. Um, and scientists have also recently slowed down light uh, even within a vacuum, uh, but just by, a, you know, a little tiny bit. Um, now I, I tried to read up on exactly how they did that, and I don't fully get it, um, uh, mainly because I couldn't really find enough literature on the actual procedure and the setup, you know, how they actually did it. Um, and I'd like to see pictures of it and stuff like that, but, but anyway, um, uh, pulses of light uh, carry, you know, little photons that are moving, you know, independently of one another, you know, slightly slower, slightly faster, uh, kind of like a group of cyclists, you know, traveling. So it's not in complete unison, so um, they tend to, you know, sometimes slow down for, for various reasons and then speed back up. And so when that happens, when uh, uh, when a photon slows down a little bit, what would happen is it would cause uh, a universe to kind of fan out and expand out from their point of view, uh, what, what would seem like from nothingness. And then when they uh, sped up again to the, the speed of light, it would contract and shrink back into uh, what would seem like nothingness. So as a uh, photon slows down when going through a medium, uh, it must observe the entire universe uh, springing or fanning out of what seems like out of nowhere. Now once it leaves the material uh, and begin to speed up again, uh, it would observe the you know entire known universe to shrink to zero in, in the direction of its motion. Um, and I, I just don't believe that that's, that that's logical. And I don't see how it could uh, exist in a state where time essentially doesn't you know tick at all. Um, how could something exist uh, in a state or condition where time doesn't flow forward at all, uh, not even a little bit? 
you know, water flowing, everything would be frozen. So I don't even see how a photon would even be able to pass through um, a medium, for example, because it would seem like, I would think that when you change the motion of atoms, for example, so all the atoms, the, the way they spin and move, all that has slowed down to a complete stop. So I would think that that relationship changes, you know, it, it changes the relationship between the universe and the photon. So I don't see how it would even be able to continue on its way because uh, so many things change, like the temperature of the universe would change, the density of the universe would change, and it's not even supposed to be able to experience time, you know, from the photon's point of view. So it can't even see change occur. But, you know, from our point of view, watching the photon pass by, uh, we can observe it, you know, uh, existing in time and space. Uh, we can send it out into space where it can travel for, you know, thousands of light years and, and past, you know, planets and stars and have certain, you know, experience from our point of view, certain events. Um, uh, so, you know, if y'all, if you're, if, if you're not, you know, familiar with the um, fundamentals of, you know, uh, special theory of relativity, you might want to you know, familiarize yourself with that because this whole video is not going to even make sense to you. Um, but, uh, you know, basically the, the, the closer you come to approaching the speed of light, um, you should see, uh, you should observe the universe, you know, passing you by, shrink to, you know, more and more, and time tick for everybody, you know, around you. Their clocks tick uh, much slower. And then if you actually were to achieve going at the speed of light, which is supposed to be impossible, you know, according to the theory, uh, but if you could achieve the speed of, of, of a photon, then the whole universe, the, the activities of the universe, uh, time would completely stand still, and length would shrink to zero, um, which just seems, you know, totally nonsensical, um, you know, kind of like that, uh, that Disney movie, uh, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Uh, or Alice in Wonderland, where it seems like logic just, you know, goes out the window. Can you stand on your head? Actually, uh, let me just explain it this way. Uh, if I was in a very fast-moving uh, rocket and, or any kind of vehicle, uh, the faster I travel, the, the more, it, when I look outside my window, the more I'm going to see planet Earth and everything else, their length contract. And I'm also going to see their clocks ticking slower and slower. They're gonna observe the same thing when they see me pass by. They're gonna see my rocket ship contract in length and my time dilate. And if I was to almost approach the speed of light, I'm gonna be extremely flat and time is gonna be ticking extremely slowly. But if I could go at the speed of light, which a photon does, then length is supposed to actually shrink to zero and time is supposed to stop. Time is supposed to not tick at all. It's supposed to be completely frozen. It, it just, it gets real, you know, mm, it gets illogical because it doesn't experience motion whatsoever. Light doesn't. So it's like this frozen moment in time. What moment that is from the beginning of when it emerged from uh, from some particle or, you know, from some electron that emitted it or whatever. So it, it, there's that first moment that's frozen in time and then never again, unless it slows down, will it see time tick forward. Um, so yeah, that's, that's bizarre to me. You may have noticed that I'm not all there myself. <laughs> I'm the moron. Now, I know that uh, some people uh, think that uh, Einstein is infallible and has never been wrong and, you know, they worship him like a god. Uh, but we already have examples of when Einstein was wrong about certain things, uh, even by his own admission, uh, like when his equation for calculating the bending of starlight uh, passing near the sun, uh, known as gravitational lensing, uh, which is what they were kind of looking out for. Uh, but that turned out to be incorrect, and he later used the orbital motion of Mercury to help work out that flaw. Uh, because, you know, the Sun is such a massive object, and Mercury is so close. Um, and w when the Sun uh, rotates, it sort of twists and drags the fabric of space-time, you know, close to it. 
And since Mercury is close enough, so close to the sun, it gets kind of nudged within that twisting fabric of space-time, uh, which is, you know, called inertial frame dragging. And, uh, you know, this happens with, or it so theoretically happens with all, you know, very massive spinning objects in space. So it kind of tugs and pulls and twists, you know, the fabric of space-time. Um, so, and, and scientists have even, I think, sent out probes and have kind of measured the effects of inertial frame dragging. So, you know, if, if something is close enough, it'll, it'll get nudged. Um, you know, which is kind of, uh, in, my, uh, in my opinion, a uh, confirmation of an ether, but you know, that's, that's another subject. Uh, he later discovered that uh, his special theory of relativity uh, was incomplete since he had not yet addressed non-uniform motion, uh, nor considered what he later believed to be the equivalence between uh, gravity and acceleration uh, and the effects they have on moving objects. Um, basically all objects have to speed up or slow down, uh, which creates an asymmetry that uh, you know, ruins the conditions set forth by special theory of relativity. Um, and in my opinion, uh, th there is really no such thing as absolute uniform motion in nature. There's always going to be some kind of undulation. You know, you can't have perfect uniform motion, like not even in space, you know, not even in the vacuum of space. So there's always going to be something that's going to even slightly slow it down or allow it to slightly speed up or something. So, uh, you know, that, so, so it destroys that symmetry that's needed uh, in, in the special theory of relativity because that always dealt with uh, perfectly uniformed motion. And uh, Einstein had claimed that uh, clocks at the equator would tick slower uh, than those at the poles uh, because, uh, you know, since the, those at the equator would be moving faster due to the Earth's uh, rotational velocity. Um, but this was uh, later tested and found not to be true because uh, clocks at the poles are closer to the center of mass of the Earth. Um, so it all uh, sort of balanced out uh, in such a way that there was no difference or, you know, as the explanation goes. Uh, so, uh, in a nutshell, um, I don't believe it's possible for anything to exist in a state where time and space are zeroed out. I, I don't know, it, uh, it may be just a, uh, you know, failing on my part, my limitation. Um, but, but it sounds just too nonsensical to me. But yeah, if you think, uh, um, if you think the, uh, the theory of the special theory of relativity and w when we consider the, the, the point of view of a photon, um, if you think that proves that the universe uh, is indeed finite instead of infinite, um, you know, write that down, let me know what your thoughts are, and if you can explain it to me why I should believe that, why I should believe that, that, it, that it is logical, that you, know, you can have that uh, you know, that reality simultaneously with the reality of, of those observing the photon, you know, traveling, uh, what, what seems to be traveling in time and space as we view it. Um, or if you believe that that uh, kind of proves that the theory uh, is, you know, wishy-washy and, and doesn't hold water and uh, should maybe be thrown out because, um, you know, those of you who may share my view that the universe is infinite and that that is, uh, d that d it does sound illogical, you know, that time can be frozen for the photon, but not for those observing the photon. So, you know, just let me know your thoughts. Okay, I guess that's it for now. Bye. And this is where it gets really convoluted and weird.